Well guys, I am suitably disheveled following a huge, huge day in the saddle with CF Moto's long awaited 800 MT. Let me show you what we're dealing with. So the 800 MT has finally launched locally in two variants, Sport and Touring. Priced from $12,990 and $14,490 respectively. I'm told the Touring, the one you see here, is by far the volume seller. Um, if you can fork out the extra 1500 bucks, you get so much more. Wire spoked wheels, quick shifter, uh, sump guard, engine protection, uh, heated grips, heated seat, look, uh, so much. I should also note that uh, the bike I've been riding's got some hard panniers and we fitted some Pirelli Scorpion STR tires to give it a bit more chance on the dirt. Now, I'm gonna go into the pub and have some beers, I reckon, I think I've earned it. I'll leave you with some of my first impressions from today and then tomorrow we'll get up early and do it all again. Well, we're about, oh, I'd say 200, 250 k's into our first day with the new CF Moto 800 MT. We've been doing a lot of twisty tarmac like this and a little bit of dirt road action. And both of those things have brought to my attention three areas, I don't want to say problems, but three areas that stop the CF Moto 800 MT from reaching its, from reaching its full potential because it has buckets of potential. But there's three little things that have got my attention. The first thing is its weight. It's a heavy bike. Some bikes, particularly big bore adventure bikes, are able to hide their weight. The BMW GSA is probably the best in the world at doing that. It makes a 250 kilogram bike feel like a 200 kilogram bike. Not in this case. It feels heavy to pick up. It feels heavy to maneuver at slow speeds. And when you're standing up in the dirt, you can really feel your upper body muscles uh, getting a workout. The second area where this bike could improve is in terms, is in regards to fueling, or in other words, how it puts its power to the ground, how it delivers its power. There's plenty of grunt, more than enough, but the throttle is quite snatchy, and you'll find that as I open the throttle, nothing happens, nothing happens, and then everything happens. And when you're coming out of a corner, you have to be very del delicate on that throttle, on exit. Because it can be rather abrupt. Which segues me nicely to my third point. A third area that stops this bike reaching its full potential and that's that it doesn't have traction control no traction control which is becoming more and more rare now you might say Spence it's a $13,000 motorcycle you get a lot for $13,000 who cares if it's a bit heavy who cares if it doesn't have traction control and look, you'd make a fair point. That's not lost on me. But I think that even though this isn't a lamb's bike, that price point will certainly attract uh, somewhat inexperienced riders um, rather than fully serious off-road guys. And I really think a bike at this weight and with this kind of throttle characteristics, it's really crying out for some traction control. Because having spent a fair bit of time on it today, while it's very capable, it's my personal opinion that this bike needs a confident rider. It needs a fairly skilled rider to ride it well. And maybe that's you. And then I think, in, and if that's the case, I think you'd have a great time on this motorcycle. But 
it's not an easy motorcycle to ride by any means particularly for a middleweight adventure bike now it sounds like I'm being really negative but I just wanted to get those thoughts out of the way early because in just about every other way I think this thing is a beaut um, it's one of the first models to come out following CF Moto's tie up with KTM and you can really feel the KTM influence on this bike this is a familiar engine 790 engine parallel twin uh, the fit and finish is great a huge step up for CF Moto particular um, I particularly want to point out that TFT screen looks lovely works fantastic the pragmatic stuff is good the ergos are great the seats very comfortable heated grips heated seat cruise control is as standard on the touring variant I've got big hard luggage on the back of this bike which works great so In terms of adventure bike, or at least adventure touring, it ticks a lot of boxes. But if you want to start getting serious, start riding fast, do some dirt road stuff, some fire trails, that's when you start to find the limits of this motorcycle. Having said that, I've got another day on this thing. Perhaps when I get used to it, when I learn how it works, what it demands, I may find it, that that weight disappears. And I may find that that throttle isn't as bad as I first thought. So come along with me. The sun's out. We've got brand new rubber. Let's see what this damn thing's got, eh? Oh man, it's been about 30 k's since we spoke. This road just keeps going forever, bend after bend after bend. It's bloody beautiful. But I'm getting pretty tired, I'm getting pretty worn out. Major arm pump now. But when you've got a road this beautiful on a day like this, you got to make the most of every second of it. The brakes. I've, on this bike I've been getting an absolute hammering and I've noticed no fade it's one part of this bike that I feel I can put my full confidence in when I go for the brakes I know what's going to happen I know what's there and that goes a long way for confidence the suspension package is also quite good, I should say. The Touring variant, which I'm on, gets a steering damper. I imagine that makes a bit of a difference in terms of stability. Around the higher speeds, you do notice a bit of lateral wobbling. Although I'm sure that's not helped by the big hard panniers I've got on the back. Overall, I think the wind protection does an adequate job. Not amazing, not bad. These Pirelli Scorpion STR tyres are not standard. They're, we've had them fitted to give us a better chance off-road. But I'm surprised at how well they're handling the tarmac. Considering how chunky they are. You 
You can definitely ride this motorbike kind of quick. It's not boring on a twisty road, I tell you that. I think it's got a little bit of a case of mistaken identity. It seems to me that the CF Moto 800 MT isn't an adventure bike at all. It's a sports tourer. Because it does this a whole lot better than it does dirt roads. In my humble opinion. In fact, I'm starting to think it does this quite well. How's the serenity? Beautiful. I'm very pleased to have these Pirelli Scorpion STR tyres on. Um, it's a fairly sedate looking dirt road, but there are some spots where you really start to um, you really start to lose front end traction, and the corrugations damn near rattling my teeth out at points. I think this is the sort of the sort of dirt that um, the CF Moto 800 MT is comfortable doing. I, I don't think you want to get too much gnarlier. I, you can, and we will. But in terms of what this bike does well, I think this is this is the sort of level you're looking at. It does this just fine, particularly with a set of dual sport tyres as this one has. Can be a bit spooky though, I tell you, I, I don't know. I've definitely, definitely been more comfortable. <laughs> I've definitely been more comfortable. Fuck. Shit. Jesus, okay. This is a bit spooky. It's all right when you're on the gas, but as soon as you lift off the throttle, the front end just goes all over the place in these um, corrugations. It's hard pack, but there's really loose like thin sort of sand on top and corrugations I'm gonna I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna play it safe here because I can see it going wrong We've got ABS of course, as all bikes must now, but it um, it does let you lock up the rear a little bit, a little bit more than other, other bikes. You can't switch it off I don't think. 
but you sort of can use the rear brake to steady the bike into a corner with a little bit of um, slide and of course you're free to do as much sliding as you want on exit because as I said earlier no traction control which still puzzles me a little bit we've got the heated grips, heated seat, cruise control on this bike, on the touring variant um, CF Moto can keep that if, for some traction control I think that's just me, I'd be interested to see what you think does traction control matter to you? on a heavyweight adventure bike I think I'd like some at least in the rain and stuff this is hairy I don't know why, it doesn't look hairy it looks great but it's <laughs> I want to just let it rip but I know as soon as I get off the gas I don't know what the bike's going to do it'll power wheelie in first gear but it's really hard to keep it at the balancing point hopefully the boys got some shots of my attempts at a wheelie earlier today and likewise it's a bit pretty hard to control in a slide too it sort of goes back to what I said earlier it's it's not a it's not a simple bike to ride it's not an e it's not a bike that anyone can just jump on and ride well it really kind of oh, um, it really demands your attention it, it doesn't give anything to you easily you have to earn um, your performance which is a character trait I do sort of admire I'll admit it just doesn't seem like the sort of character trait that suits um, like an entry level um, entry level motorcycle you know this really represents this really represents a new entry point into the serious adventure touring category for less than fifteen thousand dollars you can have a non lambs uh, adventure bike adventure tourer with the mod cons the screen the panniers enough grunt to carry you and a pillion you could go, you know, you could, there's nothing stopping you from going around Australia on this tomorrow. But it's just, yeah, it's a little quirky. Yep, I'm, I'm sort of in two minds if you can't tell. Already. On the road earlier when I was having a little bit of a dip Oh Jesus man um, I started to sway I started to really quite find it quite charming oh, but It's just It's not working for me on the dirt And that, that may lend to the fact that I'm not a very good dirt rider I'll be the first to admit that but I've done a little bit of it and I've certainly oh my god that was just compl complete both wheel slide um, that's what I'm talking about the lift off lift off oversteer and understeer yeah I've definitely been more comfortable on other bikes in this kind of terrain beautiful little town mm -hmm. 
Imagine how good you'd get at riding this road if you lived here. A long way from civilization. Likely a long way from a fair income cop shop. Reminds me of a tarmac rally stage. Probably is. My colleague, or rival, however you want to look at it, Dylan Ruddy, the editor of Bike Sales, he made a really strong point to me before, he said, he said, I find when I don't notice the suspension, it's usually a good sign. It's a sign that it's doing its job, and you don't even have to, know, you don't even have to worry about it. And I think that's a truism, particularly, um, particularly, resonant with this bike. I hardly thought about the suspension. I've hardly thought about what it's doing beneath me. And that's because it seems to work. Back on the dirt. Back into the nightmare. <laughs> Just a bit sketch. <laughs> I do note that my aforementioned esteemed colleague slash rival. a long way ahead of me so perhaps they're not having quite as much trouble as I am perhaps I should put the hammer down a little bit but it's my stance that it's better to be slow than to have crashed you might get a little bit of a ribbing for being slow and it's forgotten about 10 minutes later, but nobody forgets the crash. And it hurts. And it costs. So a healthy measure of safety among the chaos is wise, I do think. You know, I don't think it's as, it's as, not as bad on this dirt as I was making out, I don't think. It's just, I just need to adapt my riding style. You need to be a bit more forceful, I think. It seems to respond more, better when when I just tell it what to do. I should be standing up, but I just, I'm knackered. I can't be bothered. <laughs> Let us know in the comments if you know where I am. I'll definitely be coming back out here next time I've got an adventure bike. Amazing mix of quite complicated twisty roads and 
narrow paths like this and some dirt and some some narrower dirt roads and long long flowing corners you get a bit of everything out here it's, it's wonderful no better place to test a motorcycle like this a motorcycle that positions itself as a do-it-all tool and I have to tip my hat to the organizers of this launch event um, in letting us really test this motorcycle in all kinds of conditions sometimes you can go to launch events and they wrap you up in cotton wool they they engineer it so nothing can really go wrong but Mojo Motorcycle CF Moto they just all of my experiences with them have been similar they just let you have at it and I really admire them as a company for that this bike may not have blown me away it may not have met my trem oh, tremendously high expectations but it makes the gap between CF Moto and its Japanese rivals ever narrower the difference is so min minuscule now in terms of build quality so if you're still dismissing Chinese manufacturers like CF Moto do so at your peril I've said it before perhaps they're not quite there yet but it's so close and it's going to be very hard for other manufacturers to match them on value because just about nothing comes close to value as this No I hope you can hear that engine. It might give you a bit of a better idea of what I'm dealing with underneath me. <laughs> Mavi, would you mind walking us through what happened when you um, went up this hill over here? What, what was going through your mind? Uh, well, I was, I was fairly emboldened at the start of the process and got about 25.2 metres in and thought, oh, I'm rooted and officially rooted and that's what happened. And I stopped, stopped in the bike, yeah, just some tight manoeuvring turned into a bike fall over and uh, I think Spencer came to save the day, but it was a close call. Yeah, just, yeah, talent. What did uh, what did Stone say to Rossi? Your talent got mixed up with your ambitions. Oh uh, yeah, something like something, that. Something, yeah, it was one of those scenarios. But uh, anyway, I'll have a few more to be had. Uh, it's just a bullet hole up here, do you think? Yeah. Yep. Hard. It's a family restaurant. It is. <laughs> I'm going to sully it really badly
we've just come up to this river crossing and there's a beautiful deer standing in the middle. There he is. Man. I just thought I'd take a sec to show you the base variant, the sport uh, version. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of differences. We don't have wire spoked wheels, instead some cast wheels, much less engine protection. This one is fitted with uh, accessory rally pegs, which is a nice little touch, but otherwise it's mostly stock, I think. Um, you'll also notice there isn't any um, hand guards uh, no heated grips no heated seat it does have cruise control as standard um, otherwise uh, no quick shifter uh, and it doesn't have tire pressure monitoring so I think that's the main differences off the top of my head but oh someone's just pranged <laughs> one sec <laughs> Part of the adventure. That's it. Yeah. What is it? Experiencing more together? Yeah. 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 Anyway, as we were. And here's the touring, which is what I've been spending my time on because, as I said earlier, um, they're selling the touring versions about nine to one. So when you consider that it's only fifteen hundred dollars extra for all those all those bits. I would certainly want uh, the wire spoked wheels and I'd certainly want those engine protection bars and even the quick shifter I think really good additions for the extra $1500. But yeah anyway um, I gotta say I am starting to be charmed by it a little bit this bike but uh, again going through that river crossing today the weight was a factor but it just it just um, it just demands that you take your time a bit, think out your lines, think out what you're doing. You can't go in all guns blazing. Um, but if you are confident and you do take your time, I think these bikes will get you through pretty much anything that uh, you'd expect from a uh, big adventure bike. So yeah, onward. That wraps up a fantastic couple of days riding the new CF Moto 800 MT. Definitely check this one out if you're in the market for an adventure bike uh, under the $20,000 mark. Um, I do maintain that it has some areas where it could improve, as all bikes do, uh, namely that that weight, uh, the fueling, and the lack of rider aids. But at the end of the day, for less than $15,000 right away, it makes a really compelling adventure tourer. Uh, for those who don't want to spend a million bucks to get the full-on adventure experience. So, I um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you have any questions about the bike, please leave them in the comment section below and I'd be, uh, I'll endeavour to get back to you personally. Take it easy, guys.